This is a Timeless Television presentation. Jones on space station X-07, he had successfully negotiated an exchange of prisoners with the outlaw planet of Ophetius. But there had been an unexpected turn of events. Atlas San, you can't get away with taking Dr. Tyson back to Ophetius. Secretary Drake warned Cleolanda. If she didn't abide by the terms of the prisoner exchange, the United Worlds would intervene. But we've abided by the terms. We agreed to exchange Darganto and Grip for all the space ambassadors. We've exchanged them all. Now we're taking Dr. Tyson back again. We also agreed to be unarmed. What are these, pea shooters? The agreement was everyone was to be unarmed during the exchange. During the exchange, we were unarmed. Atlas, then I warn you. What you're doing is grounds for armed intervention by the United Worlds. That's Cleolata's business. I'm just following orders. Starek? Yes, sir. Take Andrews, the operator, to the control room. Andrews, get over here. Set the magnetic controls for our takeoff. And Steric, after he finishes, tie him up. Big gun, little brain. Manny! Don't stop him, Atlasan. They all deserve a beating for what they did to me. Darkanto, for the last time, will you keep out of this? You're afraid, Atlasan. Afraid of what Rocky Jones might do to you if Magni hits his little friend. Leonardo's orders were that no one was to be harmed. I assume she included you in that order, too. Dargata, you're free to go to the spaceship anytime you like. I think you should realize that taking me to Ephesus doesn't mean that I'll cooperate when I get there. You're wasting our time, Dr. Tyson. Remember this, Atlasan. I refuse to accept this fate, which I consider worse than death. Dr. Tyson, you... you look ill. There's nothing to worry about, Rocky. I promise you that. The magnetic controls are set, sir, and Andrews is secured. We can take off any time you're ready, sir. I'm attaching a time lock to this door. Three hours after we leave, the lock will automatically open, and you'll be free to do anything you please. By then, Dr. Tice will be in Cleolata's hand. Any questions? Yeah, just one. Tell me, what's the next to the lowest form of animal life? Stand back. Stand back! <laughs> Set for three hours. Yes, sir. Hurry up. Pandu, help him. Magni, you can't carry Dr. Tyson. Phil Lance said no one was to be harmed, didn't she? Yes, that's what Atlasan said. If something were to happen to Rocky and his friends, she'd blame Atlasan, wouldn't she? Yes. What do you mean? Griff, stand guard. Aren't you, Griff? All right. I'll swear Apple Sam turned it off. He's dead. He's dead, all right. And it's all your fault. You made a blunder of the whole thing. My fault? I didn't come near him. Cleo Lanto will never believe that. Especially when I tell her what happened. Come on, let's get back to Ophetius. Pondu, Steric, take the body of the ship. Are you out of your mind? 
If I don't take the body back, Cleola will never believe I captured him. Tyson's no good to her now. I'm taking over, Atlasan. You've done enough damage. Get on the ship. I'm still in charge here, and I say Tyson's body goes with us. All right, take the body to the ship. That's an order, do you hear? Leave him here. Go to the ship, both of you. Don't you move or I'll shoot. As for you. Drop that gun. Have you thrown in prison for this? You'll be lucky to be alive when I tell Cleolanda how you blundered. Get on the ship. Go on. Dargando, don't you think you'd better turn the oxygen back on now? No. I want my case against Atlas Sand to be airtight. Gentlemen, I'm sorry you've had to suffer this inconvenience, but... Since there's nothing at all we can do for three hours, we may as well relax. If I know you, Rocky, the word relax means nothing to you at a time like this. Maybe not, but to you it's an order. Starboard rockets. What's happened? Bobby. Bobby, are you all right? I guess so, Rocky. You can't get a space ranger down for long. Good boy. Hey, Winky. Winky. Huh? Put it. Wow. What hit me? knife in the back. Gentlemen, they've, they've cut off our oxygen supply. I'm going to have a look at that vent. Boys, move that back, will you? Well, there's nothing circulating through here. Vina, got a fingernail file? No, Rocky, I left it on the ship. Wait a minute. My lipstick. Use the edge. It'll work just like a screwdriver. No good toolkit should be without a lipstick. So are though. I'm sure glad we've got an army engineer along. 
do is I get this off. Maybe you'll take a look inside and tell me what you think. Sure thing. I can't see anything. I can't feel anything but a small tunnel. Here, let me have a look. This is a standard circulator. Well, what kind is that? It's a small tunnel, 18 inches square. Exactly the size of this vent opening. It runs continuously from here to the air generator and the moisture recovery section, which is probably two or three corridors away from here. If we could only get to it. Well, certainly no man can get through that tunnel. No man. But someone smaller than a man could. Yeah, 18 inches. Why, well, I don't even have room to wiggle. Bobby, are you sure you feel well enough to go in there? I'm okay, Rocky. All right. But keep calling to us as you go along. I think we'll be able to hear you. Come on, let's blast off. I'll give you a hand. The time's short, Bobby. But remember, don't get excited or try to hurry. You'll have to save your energy. Okay, Rocky. I'm on my way. Good luck, Space Ranger. Uh, this is more like it, Griff. All those weeks in that prison cell on Earth. I knew Cleoland would get us out some way. I guess she thinks we're pretty important, huh? Atlas Sand will find out just how important. You've got a web spun around him he'll never get out of. <laughs> I only hope Bobby's strength holds out. Rocky! Rocky! Guess Bobby. I just turned the corner in the tunnel. Can you still hear me? Sure can. Clear as a bell. Know something, Rocky? What? I feel like a mole. Save your breath, Bobby. Rocky! Rocky! Yes, Bobby? I've come to the end. Good work, Bobby. Can you tell what it is? It's some small pipes with holes in them. Holes? Bobby, can you see through them? No, I put my finger in one. Rocky, he's there. Those pipes bring the oxygen from the tanks directly into the circulation tunnel. Bobby, you're there. Push it open. <laughs> Bobby, please push. Push hard. Oh, it's no use, Rocky. I can't do it. If Bobby could just make one good push, I know he'd get through. You're right, Rocky. Those small tunnel doors were not riveted on. They were made so they could be easily removed for repairing. Bobby, listen to me. Now that you've rested, try it again, will you? It's no use, Rocky. It's solid as a rock. I can't touch it. Come on, Bobby. Think of something. Use your head. Use my head. Use my head. Ouch! Yippee! Bobby, did you make it? I did what you said. I used my head. <laughs> nice going, Bobby. We're proud of you, Bobby. Now. Turn on the master switch.
generator, condenser, piston, master switch. Rocky, can you hear that? Ah, sure can, Bobby. Now, do you think you can find your way back here and pick the lock on this door? I'll be right there. How did you open the door? By magic? Oh, this door is a cinch. But that other thing, it's good I'm hard-headed. <laughs> Bobby, we're very, very proud of you. You saved our lives, you know. Tell me, did the pipes push away from the tunnel opening? Yeah. You should have seen what my head had a push. That means we're not getting any circulation here. We better move to the control room. Andrews, he's still tied up. Let's go. Tyson is dead. Oh, no. This is all Clea Lana's fault. If she hadn't tried to take him to a fecius, this never would have happened. Winky, you and these men take Dr. Tyson's body to the ship. Yes, sir. We'll go to the control room and call Secretary Drake. How did you get out? I expected to be tied up for another three hours. Bobby crawled through the air tunnel. Is the astrophone working? I'll have to repair it. It won't take long. Hey, wait a minute. He moved. Well, he did. I saw his eyes. They blinked. See? Winky, what's wrong? Well, it's, it's Dr. Tyson. He... He... Come on. Blink his eyes. His heart's beating. Look. Dr. Tyson. Are you all right? Rocky. Let's get him to the control room. Yeah. Easy. I just can't believe this. You can't believe it. I thought I'd blacked out into useful consciousness. I'm sorry that I had to do this to you, but I didn't have a chance to tell anyone. Tell us what, sir? Well, it's really very simple. I took a suspended animation capsule. 
A what? A capsule that suspends animation, temporarily stops all vital functions like the heart and the pulse. It's like drowning, Winky. Oh? My laboratory's been working with it for some time, but frankly, I, I didn't expect to test its effectiveness on myself. I'd like to see Cleo Lanta's face when she finds out you've tricked her. I'd like to tell that young woman what I think of her tactics. The first person we better tell is Secretary Drake. Yes. Is the astrophone working yet, Andrews? Try it out. Rocky Jones calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Come in. Space Station XO7 calling. Come in, Space Affairs Headquarters. Marshal speaking. Come in, Rocky. I have a very urgent report, Marshal. Take it on the scrambler, will you please? Rocky, this is unbelievable. All I can say is we're relieved to hear from all of you. I'll report this to Secretary Drake right away. Hurry home, Rocky. Right, Marshal. Out. You're wasting your time trying to place the blame for Dr. Tyson's death. I'm holding you both responsible for what's happened. Cleolanda. You were valuable to me only because you carried out my orders unscrupulously. But when you start trying to trick me, you're no longer of any use. And you've made me the target of the United Worlds. For this, you shall pay very dearly. Yes? Oh, Cosman, come in. I've accomplished the impossible. Earth Scrambler code, I've broken it. Good work, Cosman. That's the only good news I've had today. And I've decoded our first intercepted message to Earth. Let me see. That's from Rocky Jones. Why, it can't be. Why not? Why, it hasn't been three hours since they were locked in. at my command that's worthy of you two. Dr. Tyson is alive. Alive, do you hear? Who turned off the oxygen? He did. What oxygen? Don't pretend, Atlas and I saw you do it, and so did Griff. You stay out of this. That was a very foolish thing for you to do. You know, he framed this whole thing. Why did you think I made the blunder? Gentlemen! Since you're so anxious to get at each other's throats, I'll give you an opportunity to fight it out unmolested. Guard, take these officers and lock them up in a cell together. I'm sure after a couple of months in the same cell, you'll both see eye to eye. Top of your head still have a bump, Bobby? Like a goose egg. That ventilation shaft must have hurt. Steady she goes, Bobby. Rocky, are we close enough to Earth to talk with space headquarters there? Yes, Dr. Tyson. XV2 calling space headquarters. Come in. Space headquarters answering. Come in, XV2. Marshal here. It's Marshal, Secretary Drake's adjutant. Marshal, this is Dr. Tyson. Give my regards to Secretary Drake and tell him I'd like to talk with him when we get back about awarding special citations to the crew of the Orbit Jet. 
And that includes Bobby. I'll relay your message to Secretary Drake. Thank you, sir. Out. with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. A timeless television presentation.